I love this photo of Gothic Mountain at Rocky Mountain Biological Lab. This was taken at peak flowering of Potentilla porcorima in 2011, 2012, and 2013. Now 2011 was a phenomenal rainfall year where they had very high floral abundance, very high reproduction of this Potentilla species. Now 2012 was in contrast a record low rainfall year and in addition to that because of the low amount of snowfall when the plants started to flower what we saw was that the flowers were impacted very heavily by extreme frost events because of the shift to flowering earlier in the season. 2013 is what we consider to be a relatively average year. Average flowering, average rainfall, average snowpack. The reason why I love this photo is because it really demonstrates what we expect to happen with climate change in this area, where we're seeing an advance of the phenology in these species by about a week per decade. And so what we're expecting is that we're going to see, rather than either the 2011 type of flowering or the 2013 more average flowering, we're expecting to see more of the kind of flowering events like we saw in 2012, where we're not only seeing very low flowering, but we're also seeing general reproductive failure because of the shift in the flowering phenology to earlier, earlier in the season, and so we're seeing these impacts of these early frost events. Now what NEON is designed to do is to try to answer these kinds of questions about how is climate change impacting the environment and how is that then impacting plant species, plant communities, and then cascading through the food chains on a much grander scale than just looking at one site. And it's not just looking at climate, but it's also looking at the causes of change that include land use change and invasive species, and looking how that's affecting all components of the ecosystems, biodiversity, biogeochemistry, ecohydrology, and infectious disease. NEON will provide data that is collected by sensors on the tower, in the soil, and in aquatic systems, both lakes and in streams, as well as by making observations on the land and in water. In addition to that, we are going to be collecting data by sensors that are located on our airborne unit that are going to fly over each site every year. And so by having this co-located set of data coming from each of our sites, we hope to really inform these grand challenge questions. We're doing this within 20 different domains that have been established considering different eco and climatic factors. These sites have been assigned different science themes. So in some sites we are looking at climate change and others we're looking at gradients of land use, including looking at urban sites and agricultural sites. We're also looking at things like timber production. By utilizing this, we can look at not only the full suite of ecosystems that we have in the United States, but also the very different kinds of land uses and impacts that are happening to these ecosystems. So we're trying to collect standardized data across all of the different kinds of aquatic systems and terrestrial systems in a way that allows that data to be fully comparable. This is in contrast to the way that your typical ecological study is done where we use methods that are optimized for one or a few sites.